Historically, 19th century observations of sugarcane workers thriving on raw forms versus refined sugar executives declining in health wise illustrates processing's role. These workers consuming fructose bound with fiber avoided the metabolic overload that plagued their bosses who indulged in purified sugars. Modern parallels abound. Think how Coke delivers fructose sans buzz, yet matches beer's metabolic hit. A 2023 review highlights fructose's role in cardiometabolic woes, urging moderation. This isn't scare tactics. It's evidence-based urgency to protect long-term vitality. Yet, how did this toxin become ubiquitous? The answer uncovers a massive policy blunder that's still affecting us today, rooted in a controversial study that shaped global nutrition for generations. The low-fat movement of the 1980s, spearheaded by organizations like the USDA and AHA, aimed to curb heart disease but inadvertently fueled the crisis. When fats were removed from foods, taste suffered, so manufacturers pumped in sugars, especially HFCS, creating addictive, calorie-dense items like those infamous low-fat cookies. This shift stemmed from flawed science, notably Ansel Keys's Seven Country Study, which correlated fat intake with heart disease but cherry-picked data from only seven nations, ignoring 15 others where no link appeared. Critics argue Keyes overlooked sugar's confounding role. In many datasets, sugar correlated stronger with disease, but he didn't fully analyze holding sugar constant while varying fat. John Utican, a contemporary, warned sugar was the culprit in his book Pure, White, and Deadly, 